I was born dark skin in a not so well to do family that me and my brother had to commute six hours each day to get to our schools into the city. I knew that life doesn't give a lot of opportunities to people like me. So I knew I had to get done with CA in the first shot itself. I didn't know what I was going to do. How was I ever going to start off in a country that was so different? How was I ever going to build a career again? And it all came back to me. My low levels of confidence, how I was ridiculed for my skin color, how people made fun of my financial background, losing my father. From the underconfident foreigner that I was, I've gone on to become this global finance professional. I despise lunch breaks during school because every day during lunch break, it reminded me of how I was a complete misfit in the world that I was in and about how I absolutely was a failure and did not belong here at all. I had all these classmates of mine who would giggle and laugh and get really excited about the lunch boxes and the meals that they were carrying. And there I was just carrying something very basic in a very simple plastic tiffin box. For me, lunch was even four slices of cucumbers someday. Um, and sometimes I'm just carrying my lunch in newspapers and plastic bags all wrapped up. So I was so embarrassed to even open and talk about my tiffin meals uh, with my classmates. So when they would be super excited about the lunch break and they would all, you know, talk about things that fancied them, I would find myself a quiet corner and go and eat all by myself. Hello, my name is Nidhi Nagori and I overcame all odds to become a chartered accountant and an international finance professional. And I'm here to tell you how you can become the hero of your own story. Today I live in Toronto, Canada, but this is not where my story began. My story actually started in a very small rural village in West Bengal, India called Bauria. I was born dark skin in a not so well to do family. And so my prospects of doing anything well in my life were written off pretty much early on. I remember facing a lot of discrimination, sometimes from relatives, sometimes from neighbors, sometimes even from my friends. But I was so happy living in the innocent bubble of my childhood. I had my father, he was my biggest cheerleader. He believed in me like no one else. He was my biggest hero. And he would tell me about all these dreams that he had for me and how if I just worked hard, my life would become what I dreamt of and that I would get everything that I wanted to in my life. That was enough for the 10 year old Nithi. Growing up, we did not have a lot, but we had just enough. Old toys, old clothes, basic meals. Not a lot on most days, but just enough. But there was one thing that my parents never compromised with. My parents were adamant about us getting world-class education. Even if that meant that me and my brother had to commute six hours each day to get to our schools into the city. In the morning, I remember taking rides on trucks and carts. And then in the evening, I remember taking public transport all by myself. Now imagine doing that as somebody who's just 11 years old. Just thinking about it today makes me feel so scared. But well, I thought that was the normal and I was so happy to do it because I believed in my father's dreams for me. As I grew up, the tiffin box was long forgotten. I was now a teenager. I strive for much more in my life now. And so I started making money pretty early on. In class nine, I started giving private tuitions to younger students. My first income was 150 rupees. Now this was the labor of an hour long session for six days in a week. But I was so happy when I got those 150 rupees. I finally be believed that my father's dreams were true. Eventually, I became a very shy kid in my school. And that shyness actually came from a deep root of underconfidence. That was because every day I was observing these girls around me, amazing, amazing women, very beautiful to look at, very polished, presented themselves perfectly and I could draw the stark contrasts between our worlds. Every day I told myself, am I actually gonna make it? Every day that underconfidence went up when I went to the school. But when I came back and spoke to my father, that same underconfidence turned into sheer will. When he told me about all the plans that he had for me in future and about all the great things that I could do in my life if I just worked hard for it. I believed in him and that was all that mattered. I continued working hard and pushing for my dreams. I took interest in business and the world of finance intrigued me a lot. So 
So I took up commerce in class 11 and 12 and chartered accountancy became a very natural career choice for me. Math was my favorite subject and I couldn't wait to grind numbers for life. So when I entered college, I also began pursuing my chartered accountancy on the side. Now that also meant that I had to do articleship, which is a full-time office role to get done with my CA. So for most part of my college life and for my CA life, I was studying for my CA exams, doing office the whole day, which also helped me sustain myself financially, going to the college in the evening to do the classes, getting home and studying again, and then the weekends were consumed by all the private tuitions that I was giving. But I'll be honest, I had no complaints. I knew that one day when this all ended, I was going to be successful. I was going to enter the corporate life and I was finally going to live all the dreams that I'd been dreaming of right through my childhood, that my father had been dreaming of right through my childhood. So I kept doing it. I kept pushing myself hard and hard and hard. Every single day, whatever it took, I gave in. I knew that life doesn't give a lot of opportunities to people like me. So I knew I had to get done with CA in the first shot itself. I knew I had to do it in first attempt. And for that, I worked very hard. I couldn't wait to write my CA final exams. And finally, I wrote my CA final exams. I was pretty confident about becoming a chartered accountant. So with all this hustle, bustle and madness, I finally saw all of it culminating into a very positive end. Now there were only 16 days left for my CA final results to come out. And that day, I lost my father due to a sudden cardiac arrest. My biggest hero, my biggest cheerleader was gone in a fraction of seconds and I couldn't do anything about it. Losing a parent is like losing half of your world. And for me, that happened in a blink of an eye. You know, you make all these plans, you work hard, you do everything right. But sometimes you're probably not supposed to do well in life. Sometimes you're just maybe destined to fail. That's what I told myself. Just seeing my father right there made me think that someone like me was not supposed to do well in her life. I was always supposed to be a misfit wherever I went. And I was always supposed to be a failure because I did everything right. I did whatever my father told. He told me to turn a blind eye to whatever people say. He told me to turn a blind eye to people ridiculing me for my for the color of my skin, for people making fun of how I looked, for people uh, making fun of my financial status in the society. I did not pay heed to anyone. I did whatever he told me. I did what it would take. But even then, life decided to throw me upside down. Everything changed. I lost my father. But you know what they say, when you hit rock bottom, the only way you can go is up, up and up. When the results came out, I became a chartered accountant. I was finally a CA. I found a job in my city, which paid me five lakhs per year. It wasn't enough to satiate my ambitions, but it was just enough. It also gave me the opportunity to be by my family, to support them, both emotionally and financially. So I took it out. And from there, life started getting better better life, better companies, better package, everything got better. Life was running its own course when I met my now husband and fell in love. Now this was a point that I'd almost started feeling that I was living all the dreams correctly and that everything was working out for me. But love makes you do crazy things. So I decided to get married and move to the US with him. When I first moved to the US, the first few days were great, but then all the puppy love fizzled out when the reality hit me hard. This was a country I was completely alien to. I had no idea where I was. I did not know anyone. I barely could understand the accent. Um, I People looked so different. People presented themselves so differently. I just felt so lost. I was intimidated by anyone and everyone. I didn't know what I was going to do. How was I ever going to start off in a country that was so different? How was I ever going to build a career again? And I remember this one time I went into a cafe trying to order food. When it came to me ordering my food, I wasn't able to push words out. Words stopped coming out of my mouth. And um, I basically mumbled, probably made some noise, some sound. My server got a little concerned and he was very kind and he wanted to be considerate. He thought I was mute. So he started using sign language with me. I was so overwhelmed at that point. 
with tears streaming down my cheeks, I rushed out of the restaurant. And it all came back to me, my low levels of confidence, how I was ridiculed for my skin color, how people made fun of my financial background, losing my father, all of it came back again. And I started believing that I was not going to do well in my life ever. I started believing in me becoming a failure. Amidst all this chaos, I realized that there is also one person who always was there to support me. This one person who showed up when things got tough, this one person who showed up when nothing was working out, this one person who believed in my father's dream, this one person who worked very hard with me, and this one person who never let me back down. This one person who was my biggest cheerleader, and that person was me. I was my own hero, and I would do it all again. I turned my life upside down, and I would do it as many times as it takes. So I told myself, I need to calm down, make a plan, re-educate myself, learn and unlearn, and do it all again. And I did it. I built a career from scratch in a new country. I observed people. I started networking, a concept which was completely foreign to me. I, going in, I started going into these professional meets, meeting people, observing how they dressed, how they spoke. I got fluent in English. When it came to job interviews, I started translating my Indian skills in a language that they understood here. And when it came to presenting myself, the hair, the makeup, the dress, the body language, you know it, and I learned it. I persevered and I absolutely refuse to give up this time. It's been four years to that incident in the cafe. And from the underconfident foreigner that I was, I've gone on to become this global finance professional who's now worked in over 20 countries and five continents. I have and continue to mentor thousands of CA students back in India. I've been invited to speak at the best colleges. I've also built a very vibrant community of immigrants here in Canada. And I've also built my soft skills and communication course for students in India. Whether it was the whole journey of being an underconfident kid or losing my father or, you know, basically being ridiculed for what I looked like and where I came from, all of it would come back. But I rehearsed every time I went into a restaurant, I'd rehearse a thousand times about what I was going to say, what I was going to order, um, how would I pronounce my words, how would I present myself. I did all of that. And I'm finally confident enough to go in and get my own food. Even today, a lot of people mock me and troll me. And I'll tell you what, I think wherever you reach in your life, there'll always be someone to tell you that you're not good enough. But you'll also have that one person who will always have your back. And that person is you. You are your biggest cheerleader. You believe in yourself like no one else. You are the only person you need and you will be your own hero. Thank you. Tell us what you think about this video and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.